Who hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins? When in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's the devil, Diabolos himself, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation, our lifestyle and time past, in the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, where he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Notice this. By grace ye are saved. In addition to that, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ, in Christ Jesus. For what purpose? Then in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Our text this morning is verses 8 and 9. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Heavenly Father, we're thankful uh, for this beautiful Lord's Day. We're thankful, Lord, that we have strength and health uh, to be here. We're thankful, Lord, for those that are visiting with us. We pray that you might bless all of us through your word. And Lord, as I undertake this process of preaching, I pray that you would fill me with thy spirit, that I would speak as the oracles of God. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I had this thought last week that I would come to VBS and I would cloister myself in my office and get a lot of reading and studying done. And I, I was very busy, actually. But I did, I did very little uh, reading and studying. I don't know why I thought I would have some peace and quiet. Uh, I am, uh, I'm not used to, to noise. I spend most of my time cloistered with the book and prayer and, and the books. And uh, it was a wonderful week. I, w I became exhausted. I really didn't do much. I think, I think they allowed me to speak 10 minutes. Um, in the end, I'm glad that those ladies don't control Sunday morning and Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, they gave me 10 minutes, and I, don't, I didn't time myself, but no one seemed to be too angry. So that's all I did all week, except just watching the church folks and the kids is enough to weary a person. And I was absolutely exhausted. And plus, I had all these cute little songs um, going around in my head. You know, Jesus is my very best friend, and here I'm trying to exegete the scriptures with Greek grammar, and I'm, Jesus is my very best friend. So I'm not sure what I'm going to say today, but if it's not normal, then I hope you understand. It was just a wonderful week. I'm just, I, I, just, I just praise the Lord. Uh, our folks uh, are just busy beavers, and uh, I loved it, and we had two children come to Christ. Amen. Isn't that good? You may think, well, you know, children, children can understand. Boy, they can. As I dealt with them, a little boy and a little girl. Uh, when I, and I ask, I try to draw them out, right? Try to ask some questions. And boy, I get some answers. And uh, especially one was just really firm. And we, we prayed with them and shared the scripture. The Bible says, Timothy said, Paul said, I'm going to quote now, and that from a child, right? And that from a child that was known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to do what? Able to make the wise unto salvation. When I was a little six-year-old, it's hard to believe that I was ever a little six-year-old, there was a little CEF, I think it was, I don't know if it was a club or daily vacation Bible school, and I felt so guilty. I knew I was a sinner. Even at that age, I knew I was a sinner. And I knew, I really, listen, I knew that if I would die without Christ, I would go to hell. I knew that. I remember going home and getting down on my knees and 
just confessing that I was a sinner and asking the Lord to save me. And he did. Jesus Christ said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not, right? For such is the kingdom of heaven. Isn't that so? So I want to preach on, on the gospel, if you don't mind. I think we need to hear it again and again, don't we? We need to hear it. I'm a gospel preacher. That's what I do, amen? To preach the good news. We need to really hear the good news. Take your Bibles and turn back to Ephesians at chapter 2. We're just going to look at a couple of verses here. This is so important. Notice verse 8. It says, For by the grace, I'm adding the definite article T-H-E. Why am I doing that? Because in the original Greek language, there is a definite article before the word grace. Now that, that is poor English, right? We wouldn't say that. For by the grace, but that's great Greek. And it's, the reason it's written that way is referring back to verse 5 and verse 7. So let's go ahead and look at that. Look at verse, look right at, you have a Bible? Hopefully, or well, you can listen up. Verse 5, But when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together, which means we're made alive with Christ. With Christ, notice what it says, the last five, letter, last five words, what does it say? By grace ye are saved. Does it say by grace and works? By grace and reforming your life? By grace and being a really good person? Don't you know that? that good people go to heaven and bad people don't? Don't you know that? Ever been to a funeral? If anyone would ever get to heaven, it'd be Uncle Harry because he was a good person. Ever heard that? That's not so. The reality is, you know what Jesus said? Good person to quote, amen? real authority. Jesus said, there is none good. Pretty plain, right? There is none good but one. And who's that? God. God. And that would be the triunity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're not saved by being good. We're not saved by joining a church. We're not saved by giving 10% of your income to the preacher. Okay? Well, listen, we're not saved by being baptized. It doesn't save your soul. We're not saved by partaking of the table. We're not saved by reforming our life. We're not saved by believing in the man upstairs. We're saved by grace. Right? That's what it says. So the Bible says we're saved by grace. Notice verse 7. Then in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his what? See that in verse 7? Grace and his kindness toward us and God's kindness to us, which is grace, is through what person? Jesus. It's through Jesus, right? You see that at the end of verse 7? It's through Christ Jesus. And notice how it begins, verse 8, For by the grace, for by grace, you're saved. Let me stop and talk about this word saved. This can refer to saving someone from drowning. But here it refers to saving someone from their sin and saving someone from their self and saving someone from their depravity. Are we sinners? That's one of the first things I talk about when I, when I talk to a little child because we, we don't want to lead them on, do we? I want them to know. And we talk about sin. And then I'll ask them. This is always a scary question for me, right? What is sin? I got some good answers. Matter of fact, they named some. Isn't that good? They named sin. Ever talk to a doubt? They don't know what sin is. All they know is they haven't done it, right? They don't know what it is. But they're not a sinner. They're really, listen, I'm really a good person. No, you're not. I don't want to be rude, but you're not. The Bible says that all have sinned. So who's, does all mean all, and that's all all means, right? All have sinned and come short. Come short of what? The glory of God. You know what it means to glorify something? Isn't it true you, you, you praise what you prize? You ladies might remember when you got engaged. And that, that poor guy has been saving for years for that big rock. 
He puts a rock on your finger and you come to church. And how do you come to church? You walk in the door. <laughs> am, am, am I right? You, he's just glad that he's, well, he's, he's going to be paying for it for six years. Anyway, um, you just walk in the door and all the ladies are going, ooh and ah. And, and you, you're, you're praising it because you prize it. You talk to you listen. You talk to a guy, and he's a he's a, he's an old muscle car guy. Wouldn't I like to have a muscle car? Don't you think, Miss Teapot and Miss Teapot, Miss Tea, Miss Teacup? I'm Mister. I'm I'm Reverend uh, Teabag. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but don't you, don't you think Brenda and I would would look good in a '57 Chevy soft top? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that? She's smiling. I, I, we probably couldn't afford the gas, could we? have to take out a loan. <laughs> but isn't it true? You see, you know a guy that restores cars, and, and I, matter of fact, uh, for years I, uh, in Ohio, I had a deacon that restored cars, and you talk to him about cars, and all of a sudden it just comes right out, right? And we're like that, right? We talk about what we praise and we prize, but we have failed to prize him, haven't we? We failed to glorify him. The word and come short of the glory. What does it mean to glorify? I'm using some illustration. You know, to me, glory is like a magnifying glass. What does a magnif children? What does a magnifying glass do? Does it make things small? Am I right? Or does it make things what? Big. We have failed as human beings to make God big. We make ourselves what? Big. It's it's our depravity. Sin is basically sin is God says yes and we say no and God says no and we says yes and the Bible says do it and we don't do it. Oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the power of this death? So we are sinners. So let's look at this. We have the problem. Notice the answer in verse eight. Notice what it says. For by grace you're what you're saved. You're rescued. The words, I love this word saved. It's a present passive participle. Now, how many English teachers do we have here? No, it's a perfect, I'm sorry, it's a perfect passive. You know what perfect means? Listen, listen, now listen to me. Perfect means it happened in the past with ongoing results. Get it? I was saved at, at six years of age. Am I still being saved? It doesn't stop, right? He saved me. If you're a Christian, He saved you. He's saving you, and He will save you finally. Justification, sanctification, glorific glorification. This, this perfect tense means did it in the past with ongoing results. Second thing, the second thing about this little participle is passive. Who does the work? Now, you, you receive Him, right? As many as received Him, to them gave you power, become the sons of God. But who does the work? Do you do the work? God does the work. We're saved by God. Listen, He saved you. He's saving you. He will save you. The Bible says, unto Him, listen, Jude, book of Jude, unto Him who is able to keep you from what? Falling. It's not who you're holding on to. It's who's holding you. Who's holding you? Listen. Who's keeping you? Who's who's has you? This word saved is extremely important. We have to believe that. That He saves us fully and finally and forever. But notice secondly in this verse, and actually I'm going to the first part of verse 8. For by grace ye are saved. So what's grace? Is that praying over your food? Well, in, in a human way, we, we say grace, right? Or is it, um, is it being gracious, saying nice things and not negative things? Well, grace is, uh, is undeserved, right? You can't earn it. You can't maintain it. You know, some people think that you're saved by grace and you have to maintain it because if you don't maintain it, you'll lose it. Well, that's not grace. It's unmerited favor. It's what God gov, does to His people. 
No, this gray, this word grace, and I'm going to do. A, can we do a little study? I know. I by the way, I started a little late. If you're timing me, I started very, very late. Very late. Anyway, but I want to stress. I want to take a little time with this word grace. How does Paul start all of his letters? It's kind of a trick question. Grace and what? Grace and peace. Is that just filler? He doesn't have anything to say? Oh, I'll just throw grace and peace in there. And sometimes he adds mercy, right? Those are the Bible students, you know, there's a few books there at the end. I think it's um, like 1 Timothy. It's grace, mercy, and peace. So it's very, very important. By the way, who's full of grace? John 1.14. Do you know who's full of grace? Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 16, of his fullness we have all received, and listen, and grace for grace. That's the word anti. It means grace. On top of grace. On top. Do you, does, your, does your cup of God's grace ever get low? No, no, he keeps filling. It's like, it's like going to the ocean and watching the tide come in. What does it do? It just, what do the waves do? They keep lapping the shore. It keeps coming and coming. So if you need grace, you've got all you need, right? Do you agree with that? Do you have all you need? He keeps, he's got to give it to you. He's got to give it to you. He's full of grace and truth. The Bible says, the law came by Moses, right? John chapter 1. What did Jesus Christ give? He, he brought to us, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Listen, we're saved by grace. We live by grace. As a matter of fact, when you sing, we're to sing, right? We're to sing with grace in our hearts. We're to be singing with grace. We're, we're to live by grace. We are to, uh, the Bible says, let your speech be, al be always with grace. The last book in the Bible, Revelation 22, 21 says, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. James chapter 4 says, he gives more what? He giveth more grace. The Bible says also in James 4, and giveth grace unto the humble. The Bible speaks of husband and wife being heirs together of the what? Heirs together of the grace of life. The Bible speaks of the manifold grace of God. The Bible says, but the God of all grace. We ought to be gracious people, filled and living by grace. Let me tell you something about this grace. Let's go back to our verse. For by grace you are saved. The word grace here refers grammatically to the cause of salvation or the source of salvation. That's why in your outline, what's the source of salvation? Grace. grace. That, that is the source. But let's move on very quickly to our second point. And what's the means of salvation? How do you, uh, when I think of means, I think of an instrument. Remember when you were a kid, you ate your Cheerios, you put as much sugar as you could get on it if mom wasn't looking, remember those days? So how did you get the cereal into your mouth? Well, if you're like me, if she wasn't looking, what do you do? Okay, but you're not supposed to do that, folks. What's the means? What's the means, right? What's the means of getting the cereal into your mouth? It's a spoon. What, the source of salvation is what? Grace. What's the means of getting it? Faith. What's another word? That's a noun. What's a verb? Believe. The Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, right? You believe on Him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be what? Saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, therefore being justified. That's a declaration of a right relationship. Listen, therefore being justified by what? Faith. By faith. What do we have? Peace with God. How long does that peace last? Forever. Now, the peace of God is not the same thing. It could be that we're worried. It could be that we're anxious. It could be that we're upset. It could be we're angry. That's peace of God. We need the peace of God. But that can come and go, right? We need to confess our sin and ask the Lord to give us peace. But peace with God is positional. 
Peace with God is eternal. Peace with God never, never changes. So we're, we're saved by grace and we receive that through faith. So, so what is faith? My wife and I went to college in, in West Virginia, down in one of them there, hollers. You know what a holler is? A holler's not hollering. A holler's way down. And, uh, it's, uh, and I remember driving through West Virginia years later, and you drive along, you know, you follow the road, and there's mountains on both sides, and there's a little stream, a little stream beside the road. And on the other side of the stream, there are these little houses that are just hanging on the mountain, if you will. And there'd be a bridge, sometimes like a rope bridge. And um, can you imagine if the preacher's out visiting, going house to house, and he's, he's on the road, and there's that bridge over the rushing water, and there's that little mountain cabin, and there, there, there's the old, the old retired coal miner. The old retired coal miner is sitting there on the porch, and he says, Preacher, come on over. And you say, Well, you know, that bridge doesn't look too solid. I, uh, he said, Oh, no, preacher, it's solid. It's fine. Just believe me. And you say, Well, well I believe you, but I think I'll just stay over on this side and holler, and holler across. No, no. Listen, if you really believe, what do you do? You step out. How do you step out? You step out by faith. You may be a little nervous. You may see that rushing water. You think, oh, Lord, protect me, but i gotta, I got to witness to this old coal miner before he dies. Amen? That's what it means to trust Jesus. I've talked to people for years and years, and I start talking about salvation. And it's interesting, folks, that people always tell you, if you ask the right questions, they'll tell you what they believe. Are you aware of that? They will let you know. They will say to you, I am really a good person. Don't you hate that answer? Because then you gotta, you got to turn it around and you got to tell them they're wrong, which always makes them really happy. Or they say, well, I was baptized. Or they say, I'm a member of the first church, whatever the first church is. And they go on and they tell you about themselves. But the Bible says the only way to get to heaven is repent of your sin. The Bible says, the Bible speaks of repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must, you must be what? Born again. How many of you have been born once? Okay, you got to think. We've got some birthday here. James. You're going to be 16, right? 16? 15? When's your birthday? Wednesday. Mine's Tuesday. And I'm not going to be 16 either. <laughs> I'll tell you, I have a couple of sixes. You know, I, like, I used to like to turn it around, you know, if you're 40. But, you know, when you turn around 66, what do you get? Hey, I'm in great shape for 99, aren't I? Birthdays. Have you been born a second time? Have you been born from above? Have you come to a place where you repented of your sin and, and say, Lord, what do we say? Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, save me. That's what it means. There's no human effort. Let's quick, quickly move on here. Verse, the end of verse 8. Notice what it says. For by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. How clear is that? But yet, what do the world's religions teach? What do the cults teach? They teach, if you go by our rules, you'll make it. But that's really bad, isn't it? I don't want to go by your rules. Do you want to go by my rules? No, no. You can't go by religious rites and rituals and rules to get to heaven. You can't, you can't do that. It's not of yourself. Notice what else it says. It is a gift of God. The theologians and the, the, the experts have, have discussed what it is the gift of God. What does that refer to? Does that refer to faith? That's the closest antecedent. Does that refer to saved? That's the next one. Does that refer to grace? 
What's the answer? Yes! It refers to all of those things. Without God's gift, Jesus Christ is the unspeakable gift. Without God's gift, we have no hope. The Bible tells us, and I'm just going to read a verse here, and I know we're getting near snack time, and I can tell you're hungry. So we, will, we, won't, uh, we won't push it. Verse 7 says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So grace is a gift, salvation is a gift, faith is a gift, and no, listen, no works are involved. No works are involved. Notice what it says, verse 9, not of works. It can be human works, it can be trying to keep the Ten Commandments, it can be following the Jewish Mosaic Code, it can be following the rules and regulations and stipulations of a religion or a cult or an Eastern religion, but those things do not save us. We're saved, for by grace you're saved. The Bible tells us in the book of Titus, chapter 3, not of works. Titus, chapter 3, verse 5, not of works. What does that mean? Not of works. There are people that think, I've gone to church. I've done what my church has said. I've learned what my church believes. I am a member. I serve in the choir. No one serves in the choir around here. Anyway, verse 5. Not of works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His what? According to His mercy. What's grace? Grace is God's favor and mercy is we don't get what we deserve. What do we... If people say, I want justice. Everyone wants justice. If I got justice, I'd get hell. I need mercy. Mercy is I'm not getting what I deserve. The, the Bible says, the soul that sinneth, it shall what? It shall die. It's not of works. I love church history. I went and swam uh, yesterday, and I met a guy from Scotland. That was pretty impressive. I couldn't figure out his accent, but he told me. And we started talking. I said, I love Scottish church history. I just love to read that stuff and love the, the old covenanters. And we were talking about about Scottish history and the word, I, I think he's probably a Presbyterian. Scotland is a big Presbyterian country. Not of works of righteousness, we do, but according to his mercy. It's wonderful to meet people who receive the mercy of God, who receive the grace of God. It's not of human effort. Because if you could work your way to heaven, you would have a reason to do what? Boast. Take your Bibles. We're almost done. Take your Bibles and turn. We'll come back to Ephesians. We'll get over to Romans. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm going to read just a few verses. Romans, Romans chapter 4 verse 1. It's fascinating to me that the Apostle Paul is talking about New Testament justification, right? New Testament salvation, New Testament redemption, New Testament propitiation, where Jesus Christ's work on the cross satisfied God's wrath and anger. And yet, who does he use as illustrations of New Testament salvation? Old Testament saints. The founder Abraham and their greatest king David. Notice if you will what it says in chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, hath pertaineth to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified, the word justified means a declaration of a right relationship. For if Abraham were justified by works, what could he do? He could boast. He could glory. He could be filled up with himself and say, well, I know why I'm going to heaven, because I'm keeping all the rules. I'm the strictest of the strict. I follow the, the laws of the Pharisees. Verse 3. For what saith the Bible? What saith the Scripture? Abraham, listen to this, Abraham believed God. That's it, right? Abraham believed God, 
and it was counted or it was credited unto him for a right relationship. Notice verse 4. Now to him that worketh is reward not reckoned of, of grace. We've been talking about grace, right? That's the source. The source is not effort. The source is not work. The source is not being a good person. The source, and I keep repeating myself, the source is not in, the source is not in you. For by grace you are saved. And how do you get it? Believe it. I challenge you today. If you're not born again, come to Christ and just, just acknowledge. Just accept it. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Save me. Amen? And if you come to Him, He will in no wise cast you out. And I'm not trying to, to shake your assurance, but do you have assurance? If Listen, if you would die today, you say, well, I'm healthy. I'm young. Do you realize that young people die? And middle-aged people die? And elderly people die? And it doesn't matter how old you are. The Bible says that life is like a what? What is it like? A vapor. It's like, it's like the fog rolling in on the main coast. You can be fogged in at 6 o'clock, and at 10 o'clock... It's white, fluffy clouds and blue sky. So life is short. So if you don't know the Lord, come to Him today. What's the source? God's favor. And what's the means? Faith. Is there any human effort? No. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be what? Saved. Saved. Amen.